Hey guys, my name is Alexandra and today we're gonna have a podcast about depression, about anxiety and trigger person. I want to talk to you about this tree because I recently went to through this experience for a long time. I mean, um, trigger person was maybe since my childhood, but anxiety was for about um, eight to nine years. And then I had depression, let's say for the past four years. Yeah, let's say four years. Like in this podcast, we will talk about this um, issue that... Um, we have discovered recently because, to be honest, um, we all suffered, uh, including our grandparents, great-grandparents, our parents and everyone else suffered from this. But we are the generation that literally try to acknowledge it more and try to speak about it and solve it. And this is literally amazing first of all i'm gonna speak about triggered person everyone literally like most of the people that suffer of depression has a triggered person that's really annoying if you don't know that that's your triggered person you gonna make the life hell for that person without knowing um why and how is this possible let's say you are amazing person you are just having great conversations with everyone else outside this trigger person and you are literally um, so kind to everyone and you would react so kind to everyone in the same situation but with that person that triggers you you react like a crazy person you react like way more than how you should react to another person i will speak about this issue not like a professional i'm just speaking as an experienced person and i'm speaking from my own experience um, i know as a fact that a lot of people they go through this they go through this point and most of the time they get this treatments or like um, sessions from experienced people and most of them they speak through terms that are used in medicine or like professional they're used professional well i will be speaking in a very basic english in a very basic way of speaking because i want more people to understand how is this depression um, acting or how it's reacting or how do you react once you have trigger people depression anxiety so what trigger people okay we all most of us all of us we have trigger people in our life and a trigger people are those that um let's say were with us in a long time in a long time journey or they were part of our journey while we had um, these issues that lead us to depression first of all i'll say our parents for me my mother was number one trigger person and i'll say why during my childhood i was literally going through a lot of anxiety panic attacks um, and a lot of situations that literally lead me to have this depression unfortunately i haven't had a good i mean um happy childhood and i mean like with my parents i mean this is the first time i'm speaking about all have to have the courage to understand and express ourselves and understand ourselves why is this happening to us right now so as i said uh my mother she was the triggered per triggering like she was triggering me she was number one person that she was triggering me like when i had these episodes of feeling uh, anxiety or insecure she was the first one that i would shout on her that i would blame her that i would get angry from anything she says that i would maybe treat her in a bad way just because 
she was my triggered person. Number two, which it came after I got married, it was my husband was and still is my triggered person. I'm working on this actually. I'm working on both of it, on my mother as a triggered person and on my husband. The most important is that I know and I understand that these two are my triggered persons in my life. Let's go with the first one, my mother. She was my triggered person because back in my childhood, whenever she had um, problems between my father and her, they were having like, you know, issues of fighting, a lot of fights and a lot of problems. Like literally they were not mature enough. And I was in the middle of the situation where I suffered a lot because of not having attention, not be um, well treated or, you know, given a lot of love that I was needed as a single daughter, not having any brothers or sisters. She was literally, whenever she had an issue, she would come to me and tell me this and this and that and your father and this it happened and I'm tired and I'm going to divorce and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you are one, like, she was blaming me that I'm the part, I'm part of her suffering. Well, all this through my childhood, it literally, when I was a child, I couldn't express myself much. Uh, I couldn't say what exactly, um, like I was not having the power to reply to her or to tell her, well, this is not true. Or how how do I make your marriage worse? Or how, how do I... Uh, make you suffer or why is because of me all this happening I was not having a voice because I was just a child but once I grew up um, and that happened around when I was like 26 maybe for the first time I literally exploded back in the in the days I couldn't tell her anything because not because I was scared of her but yeah maybe in a way I was scared of her but also because she was the person that gave me life and I would really appreciate like everything, everything um, she was doing for me because that's how she taught me to appreciate what she's doing for me. Um, but yeah, I was not having that power to reply to her, to get back to her and tell her this and this and that. And then once I got this power, I felt like I'm on myself and I'm strong enough. I went and I told her, I don't want to hear anything about your problems. I literally don't care how your life is going. You can go and divorce. You can go and do anything. I would really, really help you. But I want you to leave me alone. I don't want to suffer because of this issue between you and my father. So once I told her this, I got this power of replying, of replying to her every time there was something happening. Like anytime she she would say something that would make me feel make me feel bad i would straight away reply to her i would straight away don't le let her uh, complete her complete her complainings let's say about my father or about her life about her situation about anything i do not blame her she went through a very 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 tough life before getting married and after she got married and you know um they had they lived in the village they had very few means of money problems she she didn't get the love from her mother because she, her mother was like my grandmother was literally working on a field from day and night so she was like left in a room with a bottle of milk or two and she would drink that the whole day while she was like one year old so then my mother should my grandmother should come uh, from field from the work field at let's say um seven at evening and then they would um, find them with empty bottles of milk so she went through a very hard situation she was she is not healed but for me and you know this gener generation now we decided to heal we decided not to pass this issue or these traumas to the next generation because this is what happened they literally pass their traumas to the next generation to the next generation and the next generation so for me when i became a mother i decided not to pass this onto my son because my son doesn't deserve to 
go through all the past trauma generations he's just a newborn he's having a new life and i want his life to be peaceful and i want his life to be like the life i didn't have so i decided to heal i decided to understand what's happening to me and it started with my mother with my trauma from my childhood and now that i know that she's a trigger person and i forgave her even though it's not like 100% in my heart i don't know how to do it i'm trying to figure it out at least i have the understanding that she she's a trigger person and i have to be careful whenever there is something that she starts again complaining or having an issue or having a fight or having anything now the issue of the a triggering person would come out and i try to come down i try to say this doesn't have to happen because she's my mother and allah god and my religion and the prophet peace be upon him teaches us not to be rude to our mothers even though they say anything bad to you if they say bad if they beat you if they say anything wrong you should be quiet and say nothing wrong to your mother even if she's wrong it doesn't mean that you have to follow you just have to keep quiet because she's your mother and actually that word and subhanallah subhanallah why i feel like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he teaches the best like on every literally on every subject of our life and i'm saying that whenever i had a fight with my mother or a strong conversation and she went out or i went out i felt so bad like my entire world it's shattered just because i had an argument or a strong ang- argument with my mother or my father it's not the same it's literally not the same when you had an argument with someone on the streets or just a friend of yours when you had an argument and you hurt your mother by words or your father it's unbelievable hurt hurting it's hurting like crazy this is why our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us to not say a bad word to your mother because if you don't say that bad word and you just keep quiet and you say yes or okay fine you will feel that peace in your heart that you didn't hurt your mother you wouldn't feel that bad feelings anymore the other thing um is that once you make up with her you feel like oh my god all the peace came back to you all the peace came back to you no matter how bad is your mother whether she takes drugs she drinks alcohol she's whatever she does she's your mother and you must respect her through words i'm not saying to do what she's saying you to do or what she does it's wrong but you should just respect her the way she is so by learning this through my islam and by understanding that she's the trigger person i literally try i try my best to not having an argument with her or whenever i have an argument with this trigger person that is my mother i try to keep quiet i try to do anything else and i try to catch myself even though it's painful it's 100% crazy painful because you expect that your mother she will love you and understand you the most but unfortunately that's not the case always because their way of living because of their ways of you know uh, it's so hard when just when just i make a picture in my mind when my mother i always say this just vision your mother or your parents as a child put yourself in your mother in the situation where you was your mother when she was six years old or three years old and then you have to understand that they went through crazy suffering through crazy unbelievable suffering both of them my mother and father i i can't even explain so of course they are not healed because they were just living and working in a village 
and working like they haven't studied enough they haven't read enough they are they are not healed you know so you can't blame them you can't blame them you just have to ask god allah to make a lot of dua to allah to make you able to deal with them with my father i'm okay because even though my main issue was with my father back in the days but we will speak about it in another podcast this is about trigger person and that's my mother and my husband okay so that's what i'm trying to do with my mother i'm just trying to say um, to make a lot of dua to god to help me to understand my mother to help me to be able to be grateful for whatever i have to get me this instant understanding that she's my trigger person and that i have to be quiet i just have to you know pass it once everything gets fine then i have to maybe speak to her later even though i haven't or you know she understood like automatically uh, after she made a mistake to me she understands she would never come to say sorry she would never come to say sorry but i feel the way she speaks to me back i understand that she knows that she made a mistake because we have a bit of time left i'm going to speak about husband trigger person or boyfriend trigger person or lover trigger person in make in my case it's my husband of course he's a trigger person also it's about healing your traumas it's also about healing yourself he's my trigger person it's not because he is it could be anyone else and i know that for sure it's not because this person and because he's doing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 no at all not it's simply because of my trigger person which is making part of my journey of my healing of my depression i wouldn't call it depression anymore i don't want to use this word anymore depression i would call it trauma trauma and i'm happy that i'm going through this uh, time right now because if i wouldn't go through this time i wouldn't heal i wouldn't be able to heal I, w- i wouldn't be able to understand what's happening and i would live in the same situation where i get frustrated over anything happens to me where i would get um sad over everything happens to me where i would cry like crazy because i don't know what's happening to me or let's say you don't know you're depressed you are just frust- frustrated over anything else happens to you you don't know why you get angry with your parents or with your lover or with someone that is close to you maybe you have anxiety or like you feel sad or you feel scared to go out in the world you don't want to go to public places or you literally feel like you feel f- to faint you want to faint when you are around a group of people or you are close places you know you get this dizziness and you get this you know like you don't have air anymore like this is a panic attack and if you have this god allah puts a sign on you that there is something wrong this is so big and this is so amazing because once you have this and you understand that you have it you can fix it you can heal it there is nothing that you can't just if you don't want to heal it so um let's speak about another trigger person most of us we have like two three trigger pe- people around us but for me it started in the beginning to be my son but then i said no 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 not not my son so my husband it's even before i got my son so yeah it it was it was a bit harder to uh, heal it and um what was happening let's let's talk about what was happening in the beginning and then how we are working on it okay so first of all in the beginning you know when you go and meet a person everything it's perfect oh everything it's amazing you don't have any problem you don't dare to say to him i don't know bad words or to you know bully him or you know um try to try to annoy him or argue a lot with him no 
because he's not yet your trigger person. But once you know that this person loves you, once you understand that this person is beside you and he has given you everything, here the problem starts. And it's not, you don't do it because you mean it. You just, you just do it because it's conscious, it's unconscious thing, you know. You have this need of seeing a black sheep in your life. And that is your trigger person. With your husband, it's different because he hasn't helped your trauma. He's just literally like, he has nothing to do with your childhood. He has nothing to do with, with anyone hurting you back in your days. He is still your trigger person that's because if you had an issue let's say with your father or you had traumas in your childhood you always search for this traumas and and problems in your in your marriage in your life you think it's normal and you think you must have it if you don't have it uh, there is something wrong so uh, definitely it's not like that at all he became my uh, trigger person because I thought it's normal and because I had some ideas of a marriage that had to be and it wasn't, which was wrong because all the marriages are different, all the people are different and he has his own beliefs, his own traumas and I have my own traumas and my own beliefs and then we put it together and of course we have to, to figure it out. However, once I understood that whenever he was saying something to me i was scared this was the thing that made my trauma um this was this is what's happening and this is why he became my trigger person because of out of fear like out of fear even though there was nothing to fear about because whatever happens it happens but i was feared and i was expecting that he would hurt me i was expecting that he would cheat on me i was expecting that he's not doing his job enough i was expecting to get all this and i was waiting for the time where he's doing a small mistake or saying something that I have to activate myself and shout or get into an argument where because of my past trauma it reached really bad how it reached how i helped myself first of all i understood that he's a trigger person second i um of course this is a big process with my mother and with my husband the trigger people in general it's a big process first of all um my medication helped it's a very basic medication i wouldn't say it because i feel it's not right to say it and i feel like every person that goes through this this should um, see a medical doctor first and i've seen that medical doctor he prescribed me something um very small something very basic that helped me with anxiety and automatically anxiety and i would get the anxiety from the triggered person of course so this is why i started to talk about the triggered person so by understanding that he is another human being and he have his own life that if he does mistakes i don't have to fear his mistakes it's his own mistakes and then i have to have m my own life and i'm responsible for my own doing god will judge me for my own doing and if he does anything wrong or he hurts me or he cheat on me or he wants to do anything bad on me as long as not judged for it i don't fear it because I, I don't do this. He can't, actually, he can't do anything bad to me as long as my my judgment, the way I judge it, I don't put it in a box and I say, did this to me, I my life can't go further. So I seen it like, okay, he did this to me. God will judge it for, it, for this. My life is not affected no matter what no matter what my life wouldn't be affected so i try to remove these fears from my mind and understand that he's a trigger person and understand that this wouldn't lead to any good marriage if this will continue speaking to him and let him understand that i have my traumas and he has his traumas and we have to figure it out it helped a lot uh, we are still working on it and i have taken my own time for myself this actually 
make a big change. I try to take time for myself. I kind of distance myself from the environment that was making me uh, feel afraid and was making me acting um, bad towards this person, which is my husband. So yeah, um, the fact that I distance myself and understand myself in this time and try to work on myself in this time had helped me unbelievable well. There is so much else to talk about this topic. I really love to talk because I've studied on through my through my childhood until the adulthood, um, and I read a lot of books on this topic. I uh, spoke to a lot of doctors on this topic. I listen to all all the podcasts that are available on uh, online, and I I took this decision to uh, let others understand from my point of view, from my simple words, how and what means to have a depression, what means to have a trauma, because we said we don't use it. So how, what means to have gone through a trauma and what it takes to get out of it. The next episode will be also about trauma and we'll talk about so yeah the next episode will be about anxiety because of the trauma I believe most of the traumas are from the childhood so let's call it from this childhood trauma i hope this little story and this episode um, helped you and i would like to hear a feedback from you and um, just, just smile and be happy